Welcome back to another Lions and Tigers video. Today what we're discussing is the bank reconciliation. So what I did first was put all of the information on one sheet so we could share our screen. And the first thing that you have to do whenever you do a, a bank reconciliation is you need to look at last month's reconciliation to see if those items have cleared. So last month we had an outstanding check of 1104, check number 1004 for 350 it has cleared the bank. Check number 1010 for 75 has not cleared. The deposit of 500 has cleared. So now we're going to compare the bank information with the book information. So we had check 111 for 50, that's cleared. Check 112 for 125, Check 115. Has 115 cleared? 115 for 150. 114 for 125. Okay, then we have some EFTs. Now we haven't recorded these yet, so we need to circle these because these are reconciling items. These are things the bank has that the book does not have, and we're going to need to make some adjustments for those. We have a $96 deposit, the bank shows it. We have a $1,250. We have a $825. We have a $575. Now we have these two deposits that the bank has that we don't have that we need to adjust for. Now, as well, on the book side, we have an outstanding check. We have a deposit in transit, another deposit in transit, another outstanding check, and another outstanding check. This additional information will help us make the journal entries. So, let's go ahead and start doing our formal bank reconciliation based on the information we have. I took the liberty to title my bank reconciliation. And the first thing I'm going to do is write the balance per bank. Now the balance per bank information comes from the information that I would given you in the problem. So it's this number here and the balance per books is already right there. So balance per bank 18,013. When we're looking at the bank side we know we need to adjust for timing differences. So we need to add our deposits in transit. And what deposits in transit are is those deposits we've made but the bank hasn't recorded for some reason. 99% of the time these should just be a timing difference. If it's been more than 30 days you need to look into it and see what the issue is. So we have two of them, 125872. We add those together and we have 1,330. So we now have a subtotal of 19,343. Then we have to subtract certain things from the bank. This is also a timing difference. And these are our outstanding checks. So you're going to go back to your bank reconciliation and you're going to find all the outstanding checks. Don't forget about this one from last month. Okay, we want to make sure we get that one. So we're going to have one, two, three, four outstanding checks. And we're going to show them like this. Number 1010 one, zero, one, zero for 75. Number 1013 one, one, for 350. Number 1016 for 75 and number 1017 for 500. We add all of our outstanding checks up and we have a total of a thousand. So remember this is our less, so 19,000 minus a thousand gives us our adjusted bank balance. We know that the bank didn't make any mistakes, so we know that we should be done because we would have found differences in our check amount or our deposit amounts if there would have been a mistake made. 
So the balance, the adjusted balance per bank is 18,343. Now we need to do the balance side per books. Now you can do these side by side or you can do those report format, whatever you're more comfortable with. Our balance per book was given to us at an 18,928. And we're going to need to add those two deposits that the bank had that we didn't have. That's because the bank did something for us. Um, they collected something or paid us something and we haven't recorded that yet. So on the 31st, we're going to have $5. And then again on the 31st, we're going to have 25 so we had an additional deposits of 30 that we had not recorded. Now we're going to have to take all of those things that we said were a subtraction. So on 131 we had a loan payment that we made that we had not recorded for 500. We had an NSF check on 131 of 55. Now this was listed as a separate item, so it needs to be a separate entry was the NSF fee. Sorry, NSF fee of 35. And on 131, we had a bank fee of 25. We total all of these subtractions together and we're going to get 615. So, 1828 plus 30 is 18,958. Minus 615 gives us 18,343, which is our adjusted balance. Oops. Our adjusted balance per book. Now notice these two numbers balance. So I must have done something right in my reconciliation process. The problem or the area where students sometimes get confused is now I need to record these. I can't just have them on the bank reconciliation. I need to make adjustments in my books. I have one, two, three, four, five, six line items. So I should have six adjusting entries. So let's make each one. The first one, the additional information told you that uh, it was interest. So I had interest. Now we know if we're adding to cash, we're going to debit cash. So these will be a debit. to cash. Because cash is going up, so we're going to debit cash for five, and we're going to credit interest revenue for the other five. The second entry we will also debit cash because we're adding it to our cash, but what are we going to credit? Well, the problem didn't tell us anything. So we're just going to have to go back and find more information because we don't know why we got this $25. It could be anything from a sales transaction where a customer paid us on a credit card. It could be an accounts receivable where the customer took it in the bank. It could be the correction of a bank error. It could be a correction of a lot of things. So we would need more information. Number three, we made a loan payment. Now we know we're going to credit cash, but what are we going to debit? Now the problem told us that interest was 475, so we're going to debit interest expense for 475. We're going to debit notes payable for 25 we're paying off that loan. It's not a very good deal. And we're going to credit cash for 500. 
Remember this is called a compound entry because more than two lines are involved. But we got one deposit, so we have one entry. Number four, we had an NSF check. We're going to debit accounts receivable because the customer still owes us that $55. And we're going to credit cash for $55 because the bank took it back. Non-sufficient funds. Now, number five is a separate entry because they took it separately. They took the expense separately. So you're going to debit bank expense or NSF expense, etc. Some companies would actually charge the customer that. Um, and you could also put that to AR. It would just depend on the terms of your contracts. And cash is going to be credited. And then the very last entry, you had some checks printed, so you could call this bank expense, office supply, now this would be office supplies, etc. For 25, and cash for 25. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know.